Hello, welcome to Access 2013 tutorials. Uh, this video is a continuation of the scheduler form that we've been making, um, and I'm going to be showing you how you're going to be able to click on the text box and open up um, a related booking. So, without further ado, let's open up Access 2013 DB61. Okie dokie, right. And as I'm sure you're aware, you can go to the download section of the website and download this database. Just follow the link below the video. Okie dokie, so we're not interested in this at the moment. We are interested, however, in Form Scheduler. And as you can see, if we scroll to the bottom, where the actual conditional formatting works, and in this square it doesn't. Oh, giving the game away there. Okay, yeah, where the conditional formatting works, so for example here, what we want to be able to do is to click on a name that's existing. So in room 502 on the 17th of October, a Jay Merton staying there, and we want to be able to bring up the related booking. And if you click in a square that doesn't have a booking, uh, I'd like to open up the um, same form but in data entry mode so we can add a record. And it works like this. I'll click on J Merton and I'll get James Merton, who happens to be in three different rooms at the same time. Um, that's because I wasn't paying much attention when I entered the data. But don't worry about that. Okay, uh, so that's that. And then if I click in a square where there's no person staying, we get this bookings form open up. So how do we do that? And actually, let's go to design view. Let's do one other thing before we even do that. Let us click on there, go to arrange, select row. And let us change, well, let us go to is hyperlink, no, display is hyperlink, always. This isn't like the most incredible change that you'll ever make to a database, but at least you get the, like, the, the nice hand thing. Okay, so how do we do that? Let's drop it into layout view. Let's click on square. Go to events. Obviously, it's a macro-based event. Okay, and here's how it works. Um, first thing we need to do is find out what the booking ID is. So we set a temporary variable called temp booking ID, and then this is where we use a DLOOKUP function. So if I click on the builder, you might get a bit of a better sense of it. And the DLOOKUP function is it's looking up a booking ID in Query Bookings Exploder where the room ID equals room ID so that will depend on the particular record you're in and the date will be temp start date plus in this case it's zero because it's the first uh, row of records or first column of records I should say the second column will be instead of zero that will be a one what have I just done who knows Okay, so it goes. So what it does very specifically is it looks up in here. The necessary dates in here. So it bases it on the LNG date. So it will look up a date, for example, four one five six three. It will look up the room ID, uh, which is here, and if it finds it, it will return the booking ID. I'll let you have a play around with that um, booking or that DLOOKUP function and in the next column we have the same thing but we have it with a 1. So once it's actually found the booking, uh, oh sorry one other thing I should mention, yeah we're looking up the booking and if it doesn't find the booking we are actually getting a null value back but we don't really like to do with null values so we've used the NZ function and the NZ function works that Whatever you put in the first part, which is the DLOOKUP, if that returns null, you get to determine a new value. So I've decided that it will return minus one. So if temp vast temp booking ID is greater than zero, which means it's returned an actual booking ID and not the minus one, we're going to open up form bookings data entry and use a simple where condition to go through the relevant bookings. Otherwise, we're going to open up the same form, but it's going to be in add mode. Okay, so that's the, the general idea. Um, definitely, you know, download the database, take a look at 
this particular function make sure you understand how this works um, and uh, you know like I said feel free to change around and break it you can always re-download the database see if you can get it to do amazing things um, <coughs> the only other thing pardon me <coughs> pardon me Ooh, almost swallowed my own tongue there. Right, the only other thing worth mentioning is I'm using uh, C long as dates because if you go to Query Booking Exploder, I tend to not like to deal with formatted dates in Access. I find that that causes too many problems because uh, not so much here, but there isn't really a good record here. But if, for example, the 15th of the 10th, 2013, which is clearly the 15th of October, if that read the 10th, uh, the 9th of the 10th, 2013, Access tends to interpret that as instead of the 9th of October, the 10th of September. So what I do is I like to use the actual stored value of a date, which is a long integer here. So 41562 is how Access stores this date. Um, and uh, well, this is essentially a formatted version of this, so that's why I was converted to long integers and used that. Okay, so that's the video, nothing major there, but we uh, march on towards finishing this form, it's almost complete. Um, next video, we're going to be trying to utilize these buttons to manipulate the dates. Okay, so thank you for watching, and see you in the next video.